Today I'm going to show you how to change your MFDs from CRTs that look like this, which are pretty hard to read, to crisp and beautiful LCD MFDs like this. So as you can see, I have a mountain of MFDs to do. Frank up in Kalamazoo was nice enough to send me 15 of the MFD LCDs. Um, I'm going to attempt to change out a whole bunch and we'll go ahead and see if we can get both of these pods changed over to LCDs for their MFDs. And the weight reduction and the power consumption is what I'm hoping are a lot less. Stay tuned. Alright, so as I said, today we are going to upgrade our MFD from an old CRT to a new LCD. So, tools that you'll need. Glass cleaner and a rag. That's to clean the plexi. Quarter inch drive. You can use double sided foam tape or I like to use these uh, Velcro ends. They're double sided Velcro that stick together. I typically chop one in half. You're going to need four a little bit longer bolts. I typically don't mind if they're silver. They will be changing from black to silver. Two washers. The remainder of the hardware will be taking back from the old MFD. The LCD comes with its main board. We have our power board that Frank was kind enough to build for us. I do suggest putting a piece of electrical tape on the back. This way, it because it will be riding on this board. Next we have our control board that comes with it. We have our VGA line that Frank was nice enough to do. Then our power line to power the board. Next, he was really kind and he printed up these, which are some plexi brackets that we'll be replacing. And that should be it. Okay. So how we're going to start this is we are going to remove the old CRT. It is a total of eight bolts for the tube itself. We're going to take out the four on the front. Now each of these will have a bolt, a spacer, and two to three washers. You do want to save each of these. So as you can see, our bolt is slightly longer now than silver. We do want to keep this spacer. We'll only be using two of them. And the nut itself we will be using. The rest of it we will not. Make sure you have discharged your CRT. If you haven't already. These don't hold the charge very long. And they only hit you for about 12 volts. Famous last words. You can see just how much it takes up in there, how much space. It is insane when we swap it out, just how much room you have at the end. Jeremy was nice enough to help me last night do a bunch. And today we'll do this one. Okay, so now the tube's out, we're going to remove the green plexi. We typically use green on all of them because it's easier to see multiple shades of green. Next four bolts hold the main chassis board. They're in each corner. You will not be reusing this hardware either. There's one in each corner, quarter inch. Frank was really nice to put this kit together for me. He sent me 15 total conversion kits that are complete with 15 LCD monitors. And uh, he already built the majority of the power boards, which was really nice. And I've got a whole bunch of extras so I can do the rest. All right, so now that you've got that done, we're going to pull this on out. 
should come out to one side because of the button board. And you just make sure you get the button board wires out of the way. And here we have the CRT tube. As you can see, it is massive. When we compare that to everything that will be going in, you can see a major difference here. So, this is the old one. These are repairable. Uh, these have been lasting since the early 90s in most pods. You can still find these. They're very easy to clean. You can see they do have some burn-in image on it, if you can see that. These were used on the old 4.0 system of Battletech all the way through Firestorm. And now that we have that out, you can see our main chassis. So, that's how much space just the CRT took up. On this end, we have our button board with our jumper. And the idea is that you can use this button board and just jump it and put it into any outlet in the pod to make sure that it still works. So what we're going to do next is we're going to clean our plexi to get all the dust and crap off of it. These are sold that you're going to find them scratched up and beat to hell. Some of them crack because people over torque the bolts. So get that out of the way. Then I like to wipe down the chassis itself and get rid of the majority of the dust. Figure while we're in here. The next thing you're going to want to check is that your buttons for your button board, that all the wiring is okay, you don't find any loose, any touching, none of them are crimped this is a really good time to get in here and fix any of that if you need to. This one looks fine. I'm going to move this one's jumper to zero because I'm going to put it in the damage readout for the enemy on the bottom left of pod one. So that is complete. All shiny and new. Next we're going to go ahead and work on the new and get it all mounted. So I did experience this with one of them. I highly suggest you double check this, that your ribbon cable, there are two little gray ends that it locks into. I would suggest you reseat it. I did have one that was pulled out and all it took was a reseating. So I just go ahead and reseat it. All you have to do is pull up both sides of the gray, pop it out, put it back in, and then push both ends of the gray pins back in. We're gonna flip this over. This board we are going to attach to the back right about here. We're going to leave an even amount of space around the borderline. So what I'm going to do is take one of my pieces of double sticky Velcro, stick it to where it's not on any of the components, pull that off, try not to overstretch the ribbon cable. We want to get this as centered as possible. There we go. You can see our ribbon cable has a little bit of play to it, which is what you want. Next, we're going to take our control board, feed the line underneath. Underneath the ribbon cable, we're going to plug it in. These are all keyed, so you can't, in, as Jeremy would say, you can't intentionally, well, you can't accidentally, as Jeremy would say, you can't accidentally put them in the wrong place. Next I have cut this one in half. So what I like to do here is stick this on both sides of the ribbon cable. There we go. You can pretty much see what I'm doing. So I'm going to go ahead and affix the control board to it. You will want this accessible because you will have to adjust the settings when you get in there. The bottom right button will be your select and two over will be your menu to move up and down. And you'll want to go to auto and then hit the other to accept it. So next we're going to grab our MFD. The part with the ribbon cable goes towards the side the button board. So you're going to lay that guy in 
like this. Next we're going to grab our adapters that have the prongs on them that go up. For that, we're going to want to remove our safety film. Such satisfying, much wow. So, put in our green, put in our MFD, LCD, put in our bracket, and in our other bracket. These brackets are perfectly cut, that they actually click into place. It's really neat. So, next we're going to take some of our hardware. I'm going to do the easy side first, and we're going to go ahead and pop up here. We'll go ahead and put this with our top bracket to hold it in. And then a washer and a nut. On this side, you can easily reuse the old black if you want. I'm using all the silver, just so I know at a glance which ones have and have not been updated. turn it around. Now on this side it's a little bit different. Here we're going to take our power board and as you can see it will be resting right like this. The good thing is the bolts all line up but what you're going to want to do is put a bolt or one of your bolts through first then a spacer then another bolt spacer and take the board, plop it on. Helps if we don't forget our clamp. Let's put that guy on. Our bracket. Now we can do our spacers. Now you do not want to over torque these. But the best part about this is you can flip it and you can actually see this outline and you can line, use that as a reference to line up the MFD to make sure it's perfectly centered. And that is handy. Next, all that we're left with is our VGA and our power cable. We can get this into a spot so you can see this. Power cable plugs into the very end. And then I plug it into the second one here. VGA line plugs into the VGA adapter. greatest of these. Clean up some of my wiring here. And it goes into the middle port. We are done. So, in the end, this is what it looks like in there. You can see we have our main power line that runs to the board. We have our VGA line that runs to our VGA port. And then you have our control board that runs to the third port down there. And look at all this space now. It's done. That's, that's everything to it. It looks like this now. You can see now that you have four silver bolts instead of the black, which it's not that big a deal. You can just permanent marker those, spray paint them, do whatever. I've got this one sitting up a little bit. I know I can easily fix that if I want, but I'm pretty good with it. I think it looks good. All right, let's compare the new and old side by side. You can see here the old CRT and new LCD on the side. Fronts still look the exact same other than the silver bolts. 
So weight reduction wise, it's about a three to four pound weight reduction per. There are five of these in each of the pods. So that can be significant. All right, so now that this is done, we're gonna hook it up to the old lines. You have your 12 volt power supply, you have your ribbon cable for your button board, and you have your line that's sending your VGA signal. Remember, these are sending one red, one blue, one green. So what we have to do is, now we've got all the room in the world, we'll just plug in our ribbon cable first, and then I still force a habit, I turn it over even though you don't need to now. Always hook up the video line next. And then, do the power. Let's see if she works. Yes, she does. So again, we're going to go ahead and click our third button. And go down to auto. And click our first button. And it's going to auto config. And straighten out. There we go. So, we can pop this guy back in. As always, making sure that none of the lines get pinched or crushed. Pop back in our secure bolt. And we can do all of our button functions. We'll go ahead and put our damage on somebody. You can see how crisp it is. And, as you can see, it lights up perfectly fine. Compare it. Compared to this one over here, this is a CRT. Look how dim this is. I can slap it sometimes and it'll come back up a little bit. It is so much brighter and crisper. It's up against the screen, up against the plexi. This one's back away and allows for a lot of dust. It just looks so much nicer. So, thanks for tuning in. I'm going to go ahead and do the rest.